Hello, so I wanted to do a video on basically things you might be able to get to defend yourself with if your home came under attack. And this video does not have any proper weapons in it or, you know, tools that resemble a weapon enough. And the reason for that is I want this to be a proper improvised video and one that doesn't, you know, just say, well, if you've got a gun, use your gun, because obviously that should be obvious. The point of this video is if you were at home, for example, when there was some sort of civil unrest, and you didn't have anything, it wasn't safe to go out, but you had enough time to look through your like shed or your toolboxes or whatever. There's hopefully some stuff in this video that might be of use to you. So as I said, this is a totally theoretical video. Uh, this obviously isn't condoning violence or anything, but I just thought I'd go over a couple of things that um, you, know, you could potentially use. So, the first one is a broom handle. Now obviously you could hit people with this, but I don't think these would be solid enough really to survive lots and lots of impacts. So what you could either do is tape or um, use cable ties to put a knife on the end of this or some sort of long nail and use it as a spear, or you could simply sharpen the end. I'm probably at some point going to get a pocket knife and just sharpen the end into a spear. And then you've got a very primitive wooden spear. Obviously these are about... Or would I say this was? I'd say this is probably three to four feet long. You know, very lightweight, so easy enough to actually use as a spear if you wanted it to. Gives you a lot more reach as well than somebody attacking you with, say, a knife or something like that. As I said in this video, I'm not going to list every tool that's in the shed because obviously machetes, um, lots of garden implements would be very good for that. Sickles as well are quite useful, and scythes or see stuff like that. Um, what? I will mention, though, I've not got one to show in the video, but shovels, especially sort of short entrenching tools, are very, very good. Um, a lot of weight on the head, obviously, and they're sharp, so if you bring them down, it's a combination of crushing and cutting force. Um, sh uh, shovels were used by a few armies as well as actually melee weapons rather than issuing combat knives, so there's always that to bear in mind. That said, a simple broomstick handle. I don't think it's the toughest thing in the world, but you can either sharpen it to a point and then have that as a primitive spear, or tape or cable tie an actual big knife to it, and then you've got a more advanced spear. But as I said, I'm not going to be going through knives in this video because I classify them more as closer to an actual weapon if you were to be using it, not a totally improvised thing. Okay, so here's my favourite of these sort of things, and this is a pickaxe handle. As you can see, this is quite tall, uh, big and tall. Again, this is probably only about three feet or so. It's a bit short on the broom handle. However, this has got a lot more weight and bulk to it. So obviously, what these are for is putting an actual pickaxe handle on the end. Um, but, <coughs> obviously, something this big can be used uh, like a baseball bat, cricket bat, that kind of thing. I'd actually think this would hit a lot harder than a cricket bat or a baseball bat. Very easy to swing, because that's its job. It's for using as a pickaxe, or a big sort of lumberjack axe. Um, another thing I've not included, because um, I don't have any handy, but if you had them would be shorter hardwood handles for like little hatchets and things like that. Obviously they do the exact same thing, act like a short baton. This though, it would be very good for kind of like quarter star fighting, obviously I am not trained to do that, but if you were being attacked by people who were armed with like pocket knives and things like that, and you had this, you've got a lot more reach and hitting power than somebody, you know, trying to get at you with a knife. Obviously you can thrust it and do all that sort of stuff with it. But obviously the best thing is if you can get a good swing, this coming down at full force on somebody's head would not do them any favours. These have traditionally been used by riot police to break up riots and strike breakers and things like that, so they are definitely very good at hurting people. Um, and something like this is definitely not as flimsy as the um, sort of pole for the broom. Again, with something like this, if you wanted to, you probably could put some sort of blade on it and then use it like a spear. It would be less effective, it has less reach, and it's heavier, but for an actual club, it would work very, very well. And as I said, there's lots of if different other kinds of wooden things that you could implement as clubs and spears and things like that that would probably be around your house, but it totally depends what you want to get at. Now, a less lethal method would be this, and there's probably a lot of other household chemicals that would act like this as well. Again, would never recommend spraying them in an actual scenario unless you really had to. But this is rubbing alcohol or 
um, isopropyl alcohol, the proper name, and irritating to skin, highly flammable. So basically, this one's in a squirty bottle as well, this one I do cleaning with, but obviously you press that and it sprays rubbing alcohol. I'll spray it in the room now, but away from the camera, but hopefully you can see there that it's done a mist of the alcohol. Um, obviously if this is sprayed into your eye it really hurts, um, it will blind you temporarily so um, this would obviously work. Now there's another thing I'm combining it with in the video which is a lot nastier but you know if your life was threatened this might be useful. If you've got one of the kitchen kind of blowtorch lighters that gives you a bit of range, not very much. I imagine it would be quite intimidating. Um, obviously this is a very hot flame on one of these. Um, you can get ones that are even bigger and have a bigger flame as well. So if you had that sort of thing, I imagine that would be very intimidating and hopefully somebody wouldn't attack you. If you combined it with something like this, you're spraying them with a flammable liquid and you've got a flame. So um, it's quite obvious what that would do. Uh, as I said, that's not the sort of thing I'd really like to use. It's quite nasty. You know, I think it'll, if you're going to resort to violence, you might as well make it quick and effective. Saying that, similarly... If you've got a can of deodorant handy, that would do the same sort of thing. When I was in school, kids liked to spray deodorant each other and set each other on fire with it. So, you know, that's one of those weird things people do. But, you know, that would be another thing that would work. And I imagine a lot of other household sort of sprays like polishes and all things like that would do the same sort of thing. So, that's some things to obviously be getting on with. As I said, shovels would be very good, but I didn't bother getting one in for the video. And there's obviously lots of hand tools and knives and hatchets and sickles and things like that that would be very good as well. But in this video I didn't want to show lots and lots of things that were literally, you know, just in the shed. But your garden shed and your toolbox almost are an armoury in a sense. But the thing is, I think it's more of a mindset. If your life is threatened and you haven't got a proper weapon, there's lots of things that can do lots of damage to people. People, after all, are basically just muscle, fat and skeletons. 70% of us is basically just water and blood, you know. Um, we're quite easy to puncture and kill. So, you know, that's just an idea for this video. And, as I said, this is definitely not meant to be encouraging violence in any way. It's more, if your life was threatened in some sort of civil unrest scenario and you hadn't actually got firearms or actual, you know, swords or anything like that, what could you use? Uh, so these are just some ideas. I said it's not, you know, like a really total and complete list. There's lots and lots of other probably very interesting things people can think of. But, as I said, for me, probably the pickaxe handle would be the way to go because one of these things would be very effective um, and intimidating due to its size. Um, and obviously, hitting somebody of this will do lots and lots of damage. So, there you go. That's my video regarding. Um, sort of self-defense um, and potential weapons that you can improvise from um, stuff in your house if you know something bad really did go down obviously as I've said um, if you've got proper knives and things like that then they might be a better option but this is just you know what weird stuff might you have laying around that you could use and um, hopefully this is actually useful information if anybody then ends up in a situation further down the road where um, some bad stuff does happen, then maybe if they remember some of the stuff in this video or think of good things, they can uh, you know, use that to their advantage. But I said, obviously, don't go doing this to anybody um, that doesn't deserve it, and don't go carrying around any of this stuff on the street, um, because obviously you're liable to get in a lot of trouble, and you're not going to accomplish anything. So, there you go. Uh, household items that can be weaponized for self-defense.